Hello everyone, I hope you are fine. Now in this chapter, chapter 22, monitoring jobs and inflation, we are focusing on two main indicators for any economy, which are unemployment rate and inflation rate. In the previous chapter, in chapter 21, we focused and concentrated on another main economic indicator, which is real GDP, the measure of the value of the production of final goods and services. Now in this chapter, we are turning to two other important indicators. So we can say that our chapter is divided into two main parts. In this part, in part, in part number one, we are going to talk about unemployment and on the other part, part number two, we are going to focus on inflation and how to measure inflation. So let's start with the chapter outline. We have five main points in this chapter. Firstly, why unemployment is a problem? How do we measure the unemployment rate? Unemployment and full employment. And then we turn to the other part of the chapter. We are going to tackle inflation. Why inflation is a problem? And finally, how do we measure the inflation rate? So let's start our chapter with the first part, which is what which is unemployment. So first we are going to ask ourselves the question which is why unemployment is a problem? Why having a high unemployment rate is not considered an advantage for any economy? So actually unemployment results in two main costs. Number one, lost incomes and production. Number two, lost human capital. So what about lost incomes and production? Yes, of course, the unemployment rate means what? Mean that some those who are willing to work, able to work and want to work did not found the work. And this means that the economy is losing some of its potential, is losing some of its production and thus some of its additional income. Lost the human capital Yes, sometimes the prolonged unemployment, which means staying unemployed for a long period of time, means that over the time you are going to lose some of your skills, knowledge, and experience. So unemployment results in lost human capital. Now we are going to turn to the important question in this part. How do we measure unemployment? How can we calculate the unemployment rate in any economy? Of course, we cannot say that all the unemployed will be calculated in the official unemployment rate. But what we are going to do, we are going to divide the population of the country into two main groups. Number one, the working age population, all those people aged 16 years and above who are not in jail, hospital or some other institution. Number two, people who are too young to work below 16 years of age or those in any institutional care. So we divide population into working age population and institutionalized. Of course, those in the working age population will be available to enter the labor force. Thus, the working age population is divided into two main groups, people in the labor force, people not in the labor force. People in the labor force are those who are available and looking and able to work. People not in the labor force are those who might be not available or willing or able to work. So people in the labor force are either employed or unemployed. People not in the labor force cannot be counted in the employed or unemployed. Examples for people not in the labor force include the disabled, full-time students, and housewives. So we can say that the labor force is a sum of employed and unemployed workers. Now, we can turn to the unemployment and who will be considered unemployment, who will be calculated in the official unemployment rate. Actually, for a person, to be included in unemployment rate, this person must be in one of the following three categories. Number one, 
without work but has made some specific efforts to find a job within the previous four weeks number two waiting to be called back to a job from which he or she has been laid off number three waiting to start a new job within 30 days so based on this figure we can see how the labor force is categorized in the United States here we have at first the population includes all those included in the population of the country we can divide the population as we said before into those who can work those who are in the working age and those who are young and in un, uh, and institutionalized and thus cannot be included in the working age those in the working age population are either included in the labor force or considered not in the labor force finally those in the labor force are divided into those who found jobs employed and those who did not find job jobs who are the unemployed so we are interested in this red portion we are interested on the rate of those who are unemployed so we are going to focus and calculate three labor market indicators which are number one the unemployment rate number two the employment to population ratio number three the labor force participation rate so let's start with the unemployment rate the unemployment rate the unemployment rate is a percentage of the labor force that is unemployed so we are talking about how much of the labor force is not employed thus the unemployment rate equals one. number of people unemployed divided by labor force time is 100 to get the percentage of the unemployed the unemployment rate fluctuates all over the business cycle it increases in a recession and reaches its peak value after the recession ends. here in this figure we are going to talk about the unemployment rate in the United States during 1980-2017 as you can observe from this figure we found that sometimes unemployment rate rises other times unemployment rate falls below its average so sometimes we have above average unemployment other times we have below average unemployment of course unemployment rises above its average in times of recessions like in 1982 1990 1991 2008 2009 here we can observe a recession in 2001 but actually the unemployment rate was below its average other times the unemployment rate is below its average of course at times of expansion then we have the second labor market indicator the employment to population ratio the employment to population ratio is the percentage of the working age population who have jobs so we can calculate the employment to population ratio as employment divided by working age times 100 to get the percentage of employed out of the working age finally the third labor market indicator the labor force participation rate the labor force participation rate is the percentage of the working age population who are members of the labor force who are part of the labor force so the labor force participation rate is equal to what labor force divided by working age population time is 100 to get the percentage of those who in the working age who are considered part of the labor in the next figure we are showing the relationship between labor force participation rate and the employment to population ratio in the u.s economy here we have the yellow curve which is what with which is the employment to population ratio and the blue one which is labor force participation rate of course as you can see 
they both are fluctuating all over the business cycle all over the years but we can see that the fluctuations in employment to population ratio are higher than the fluctuation in labor force participation rate why because labor force participation rate includes both the employed and the unemployed now how we are going to deal with those who are considered employed but not working for all the time or those who are considered unemployed just because they were not looking for jobs in the last four weeks so we have other definitions of unemployment first we are going to talk about the marginally attached workers what do we mean by marginally attached worker a marginally attached worker is a person who currently is neither working nor looking for work but has indicated that he or she wants and is available for a job and has looked for work sometime in the recent past so we mean by the marginally attached worker a certain worker who was looking for a work but after some time decided to stop looking for a work one of the categories in the marginally attached workers are discouraged workers what do we mean by a discouraged worker a discouraged worker is a marginally attached worker who has stopped looking for a job why because of repeated failure to find one in the labor market another problem that we face whenever we are measuring unemployment rate part-time workers who want full-time jobs many part-time workers want to work part-time but some part-time workers would like full-time jobs and cannot find them so how we are going to calculate and consider those who want full-time jobs but did not find these jobs actually in the official statistics these workers are called economic part-time workers and they are partially unemployed so they are partially unemployed but they are included in the employment rate in the country they are part of the employed although they are partially unemployed to face the problems related to calculating unemployment rate the United States has six alternative measures for unemployment let's look at these alternative measures firstly we have U1 which includes long-term unemployment for 15 or more weeks U2 we have all those job losers U3 which is the official unemployment rate number of unemployed divided by the labor force time is 100 u4 here in the u4 we add discouraged workers in u5 we add all other marginally attached workers and finally in u6 we add all part-timers who want full-time jobs in this way the united states consider the different types of unemployment where remember that u3 is the official unemployment rate which we have observed in the beginning of the lecture now we turn to another part in our lecture unemployment and full employment and what do we mean by full employment to be able to distinguish between unemployment and full employment firstly we should differentiate between three types of unemployment which are number one fractional unemployment number two structural unemployment number three cyclical unemployment so let's start with frictional unemployment frictional unemployment frictional unemployment is the unemployment that arises from normal labor market turnover yes usually some people are leaving the market others are entering the market someone is leaving a job to enter a new job and that's why the frictional unemployment takes place through the creation of and destruction of jobs require that the unemployed workers search for new jobs and that's why we have frictional unemployment frictional unemployment in any economy 
Frictional unemployment is a permanent and healthy phenomenon of a growing economy. Number two, structural unemployment. Structural unemployment is unemployment created by changes in technology and foreign competition that change the skills needed to perform jobs or even the locations of jobs. So it results from two main sources, changes in technology or foreign competition, which will require new skills to perform the job. Structural unemployment, of course, lasts longer than frictional unemployment, but also it is natural in most economies nowadays. Remember, we are living in the age of globalization. Finally, cyclical unemployment. Cyclical unemployment is the higher than normal unemployment at a business cycle trough and lower than normal unemployment at a business cycle peak. So here it appears that cyclical unemployment is largely related to business cycle stages, is largely related to peak trough, which are the turning points of the business cycle, as well as recession and expansion, which are the stages of the business cycle. So cyclical unemployment will fluctuate all over the business cycle. It rises in times of recession and falls in times of expansion. So what about natural unemployment or full employment? We can say that natural unemployment is the unemployment that arises from frictions and structural change when there is no cyclical unemployment. So natural employment means what? Means the zero cyclical unemployment. So natural unemployment is all frictional and structural unemployment. This situation is known also as what? As full employment. Natural unemployment rate is natural unemployment as a percentage of the labor force. However, we cannot say that the natural unemployment rate is a fixed figure. It changes over time and it is influenced and affected by many factors. Among the key factors affecting natural unemployment, number one, the age distribution of the population. Of course, if the population is dominated by young people, in this case, we can expect a higher rate of frictional unemployment and thus a higher rate of natural unemployment rate. Other things constant. Number two, the scale of structural change. As the scale of structural change increases, the structural unemployment will increase and vice versa. Number three, the real wage rate. If there is a minimum wage set in the labor market or even there are some form of efficiency wages set by the or the employer to attract the highly efficient workers. In this case, the real wage rate is above its equilibrium wage rate. So we can expect structural unemployment. And finally, number four, unemployment benefits. Raising the unemployment benefits will reduce benefits for job search by those who are unemployed. So frictional unemployment will increase when unemployment benefits increase. But as we observed before, the unemployment rate is fluctuating over the business cycle. Yes, cyclical unemployment is largely related to the business cycle. So, potential GDP is the quantity of real GDP produced at full employment, as we observed before in chapter 21. Now, what is the output gap? The output gap is the difference between real GDP and potential GDP. So output gap is equal to what? Real GDP minus potential GDP. If real GDP is above potential GDP, output gap is positive. Vice versa. If real GDP is below potential GDP, output gap is negative. If real GDP is equal to potential GDP, the output gap is equal to zero. So over the business cycle, the output gap fluctuates and the unemployment rate fluctuates to around the natural rate 
of unemployment. Here in this figure, we can observe the relationship between the output gap and the fluctuations of unemployment around its natural rate. As we can see here to the right, we have the blue curve above, which represents the output gap, and we have below the orange one, which, repre which represents the unemployment rate. As we can see, when the output gap is negative, unemployment rate rises above the natural. And when output gap is positive, unemployment rate falls below its natural. And when output gap is zero, unemployment is at its natural rate of unemployment.